The skeletons low crawl through the grass, their heads adorned by black bandanas. Except for Auspicious, he is both a bandana and his flower crown. Time skips backwards. The necromancer Kyla has succeeded in her mission to rescue her mother from slavery. But her greed and desire for her own machinations has left one of her few friends dead, and has condemned countless others to death due to her bottling up four undead heroes to do her bidding. So much was clear as the carriage had rolled past the great mount of bodies. The carrion birds circling overhead still haunted her nightmares, of which she had many. Now they were outside a besieged town, and she knew her skeletons were the single grain of sand that could tip the scales. She had thought this was where they were hiding their carriage and party, and used some spare cloth she had to mark her skeletons with their favourite symbol of war, a black head bandana with long tails flowing off the knot. Kyla sent her skeletons to deal with death and destruction to the enemy, and she sat upon the top of the carriage looking out into the distance to the siege. Current moment. Their armour slides across the grass silently, and their exposed bones shimmer in the moonlight. But the grass hides their stealthy approach to the siege camp near the shore, and on the closest side of Taliab. The skeletons can hear great booms in the distance and shouting, and when they finally close the distance, they can see that there are ships in the harbour of Taliab, trading fire with counter batteries on the shore. Plumes of dark earth and fire spark here and there, and at times the shore batteries fire their own cannons, or launch fiery catapults round into the darkness. The ships have all doused their lanterns to hide their location, only the flashes telling their lay, and the shore's batteries have done the same, only being visible for a mere moment as a culverin flashes, or a catapult shot is lit and then flung into the air. A small ball of light is seen flung from the walls, and where it lands a small pocket of fire is seen. It looks like a lantern. The ships use the light as a sight marker, and fire upon it in which the wall then hurls another lantern into the night to spot the ship's next target. Empty eye sockets peer every which way in the tall grass, looking over the camp and its many tents, as well as noticing a small picket nearby. Skeletal figures rise out of the grass and stalk forward, cracking their knuckles or readying weapons as they approach. The picket is made up of very tired-looking Arderman soldiers, and some are even sleeping on the ground rolled up in blankets and catching their rotation of rest. The two awake soldiers are leaning hard on their spears, a small torch nearby providing a minuscule amount of light that flickers and gutters in the wind that rustles the grass. Auspicious gives his staff a shake, and the organic fox familiar rolls up and out of the grass, its citron eyes gleaming maliously in the light. Wordlessly, the two share a few words, and the familiar steps gamely up to the picket and walks past the guard standing in the middle of their little picket. Aw, oh, it's a little fox, one of the guards says tiredly, and bends down to look at the familiar. Dirt grinds under a heel as the other soldiers turn round, blinking sleepily. The soldier reaches out, his face holding a small smile at this little experience. Hey, little guy, how are you doing? Far better than you, it says, and winks a jeweled eye. What? Is all that escapes his mouth as a short sword pierces through his neck, his face stupid with surprise and shock. There is no time for reaction, as the attack is quick and brutal. The soldier fell to his knees, clutching his throat from Rowdy's attack. Drunk Skelton leapt forward and brought his foot down, crushing the spine of a soldier that was sleeping on his stomach. He died with barely even a sound, and shuddered into death. The sleepy soldiers barely even had time to register Agile's attack the skeletons launching itself from the grass like an assassin and tackling the man, stabbing him in the neck and holding his skeletal hand over his mouth. To be frank, it was a record amount of stabs. The last kill was to go to Auspicious, who strode forward towards the last sleeping form, blissfully unaware to the death surrounding him. People still say that the sport of ball for distance was invented that day, as Auspicious brought his hammer torch up in a golf swing. The noise of Auspicious rattling and torquing his armour in the wind caused the sleeping soldier to blink his tired eyes awake, and he looked up into the eyes of an uncaring, hammer-torch-wielding, flower-crown-wearing being of death. Four! Auspicious said coldly, and brought his hammer-torch down in an arcing swing, twisting his feet in a perfected form still unknown. With wet thuds, the man's head went flying into the grass, 
and his body did not even move. His hands still clutching sleepily at the blanket where they had been when he woke up for the split moment to witness the bringer of his doom. The rest of the skeletons golf clapped sarcastically. With the picket taken care of, the skeletons began to formulate a plan to attack this particular piece of the siege, unknowing of what lay inside. Auspicious Skeleton has the idea to summon some owls, and they all rally behind the idea to use some owls to perhaps drop a torch into the canvas of the tent. Then they notice that there is a pot of torch oil, and more torches, and this solidifies their plan. Auspicious Skeleton thinks hard on his staff, giving it a shake and raising his sockets to the twinkling night sky. After a few moments there is a rush of wings, and two owls answer his call, flapping down and resting on one of the dead soldiers of the ground. Hoot! <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a pigeon! <laughs> Skeletons are all super stoked to have the owls, and Auspicious convinces them to carry the lit torches and drop them on the big command tent in the siege camp. The owls take quite a lot of convincing. They are angry if not aghast hoots here and there. However, in the end, the owls bear aloft the torches. A bit of circling is done, but torches are dropped into the command tent of the siege camp, and it is set merrily ablaze. The skeletons all cheer, but notice a lot of yelling from the walls and camp, confused rattling. Have the ships fired lately? A huge broadside of ship fire is heard in the distance, the rumbling challenge rolling across the water into the camp. Cannonballs the size of small babies rocket and bounce across the camp, tearing apart tents and people alike, causing all hell to break loose. The cannonball also begins skipping and thumping towards the skeletons. With Zoidberg-like grace, they whoop 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 <laughs> out of the line of fire, agile skeleton grabbing the oil container in order to create more fire. The skeletons are ducking, dipping, diving and dodging their way towards the walls as the ships are lighting the camp the fuck up. There must be four or five warships just pounding this camp to shit. Men are flying here and there and cannonballs make direct hits and supplies are being flung around like they were made of paper. Fire spreading beyond the main command tent and the oil circle overhead giving auspicious a bird's eye view of the mayhem. Drunk, agile, rowdy and auspicious skeleton are now running down the no man's land to the shore battery and a voice is heard above them. Skeletons! They're skeletons! Hey, it's me! Karen leans over the wall and waves at the skeletons. She had a lantern in her other hand and she is covered in stolen shit that she's lifted from her enemies. The skeletons yell up at her as they run in greeting and trade information as they run and Karen chases them from atop the wall. Hey! shouts agile holding the vessel of oil in his hands. Throw me a lit lantern so I can set the shore battery on fire. Karen, without a word, yeets a lantern at him. Agile is confident in his skill, sending out Jojo vibes as he holds the vessel one-handed and reaches for the lantern coming down at him. He misses the catch. It smashes into the oil vessel. Agile is now on fire. Agile is now very on fire. The other skeletons yell out in shock and Chiron slowly leans back from the wall and disappears from sight. <laughs> Agile Skeleton is now running a dead sprint towards the shore battery, ghost ridering his way to the target. The rest of the skeletons are running after him, trying to put him out, but they notice something peculiar. Impacts of cannonballs is getting closer. Some of the ships are training their target line on the moving flame and now the cannonballs are beginning to land near and throw dirt on the skeletons. Agile is still screaming and running and finally finds the short counter battery. Channeling Paul Smecker, Agile raises his flaming arms up amongst the panicked crew of the short battery, who turn to see a flaming god of death, a skeleton wreathed in armour and flame, screaming into the sky and holding his arms out as if he's in embrace. There was a fire fight! <laughs> <laughs> On cue, there's a terrifying amount of flashes in the distance, as the ships can even see from where they are that the short battery is lit up by a massive flame. Iron cannonballs pound the shore battery, wood splinters flying and some kegs of gunpowder being detonated by the hot rounds slamming into them. So much dirt, sand and blood is thrown into the air that it douses Agile and smothers the flames. He is, well, he's still undead and not going back to the grave quite well. 
Rowdy, drunk and auspicious, arrive in time to put any other smouldering pieces of his armour, or bones, and even manage to save what's left of his bandana. The ship fire begins to walk itself back towards the main camp to continue the harassment, and the command of the camp makes its appearance. The flesh mistress and her paladin escort come into view among the flaming camp, barking orders. The flesh mistress is an average height woman with tan skin, black hair, a belt of knives and other torture implements, and light leather armour. The paladin is in his prime, young and almost radiating with a holy aura as he throws a tripper towards a bucket. The skeletons see this, and then see a still working ballista. Skeletons rattle, look at each other, and then all rush to the ballista. Gears creak and moan as the skeleton crew struggles to turn it, sand an exploded person having been blown into the mechanisms. With a bit of a push, they align the ballista on target, and Rowdy slams the release. Dice unrolled, and I fucking scream. The mistress of flesh turns to see a fucking ballista bolt heading straight towards her, and turns as much as she can before the head of the missile eviscerates her stomach. Her hands fly down to hold her intestines as they make a gambit for freedom, and the bolt thuds into the dirt beyond. Blood pulls at her mouth as she spins around, yelling hoarsely at the paladin before falling down in her ass, still struggling to wrangle her guts. Furiously, he turns and runs over, successfully healing her. A long, ruined scar runs along her perfect abs, as she will remember this slight. The paladin's eyes turn and follow the path of the missile and see a bunch of goons huddled around a fucking ballista. Jaunty skeleton wave, Doc Giff. Soldiers are called to order and form in front of the paladin, and they all begin to push out from the flaming camp, ducking as cannons whistle overhead. Our skeleton crew begin scrambling for more artillery and find a fucked up culverin, but it can still fire. By a stroke of luck, it's loaded with a scramble shot having been loaded in case of a shore landing to attack the camp. Drunk Skeleton is right pissed that they haven't run yet from the walking cure for the undead, and shoulders the culverin alone via massive strength checks, holding the bastard of a thing like he's a German MG42 team member. Fire is found, and the skeletons hold their breath as Agile lights it. There is a pause, and then a loud BOOM! The weapon lifts away from drunk shoulders and cartwheels off into the distance, almost splattering auspicious like a bowling pin. The damage is high, and they decimate the ranks of soldiers, even managing to damage the paladin. With this done, they hightail it the fuck away from this entire scene, the paladin's scornful eyes watching them as he holds a hand to his wounded hip. The aisles have been overhead the entire time, and the flesh mistress notices. She flings a knife out of hate and nails the female owl, who flutters and flaps towards the burning camp, never to be seen again. Morning is coming, and the skeletons find a place to hide in the burnt-out districts on the outside of the walls. They seem like it was a trading hub, and everything is in ruin. As the sun rises, the skeletons can see the siege camp is right fucked, and looks like a bombing run has been done. The male owl comes to rest near Auspicious, and looks weary, sad and alone. Auspicious does his best to comfort the isle, and it hoots mournfully. He makes a nest as best he can for it, and lets it rest. The skeletons check in with Kyla, and Auspicious calls forth some. Dice rolls. A pair of fucking golden eagles. They do recon for the grip, and they see they hit the smallest of the camps, as other larger camps surround the city, some bearing hardcore siege weapons, towers, and a sapper pit. There are also trip movements from the ruined camp, and the troops begin marching past the ruined section of buildings where they're hiding. One of the figures stops near the building, and it's that fucking paladin. The guy actually sniffs in the air, and calls over some soldiers and points to the building they're hiding at. Skeletons scramble and start tossing random shit into the stairwell to block their way. Soldiers walk in, see this, and go, Well, fuck that! <laughs> Sorry sir, we didn't see anything. Paladin squints at the building, but moves on with the column. Skeletons reload their weapons if needed and check equipment as the time passes. The skeletons exit the building minus one sleeping birdo and finds a smaller side gate. Trippers on top of the gate exchange words and information and Rowdy asks for a longbow with some fire arrows in case he has to signal for anything to the guys on the walls. Wall trippers agree and toss down a longbow and a bundle of cage arrows. The eagles notice something odd. 
so Auspicious makes him circle around it. Eagle Eyes has spotted the location of the door knockers and sees that in their camp there are a lot of barrels and all the ogres are standing around a figure in the middle. The figure is another ogre, whom is kneeling in the middle of a large blanket adorned with many odd objects. Weapons, armour, skulls, sacks of coins, flowers and a lot of red cloth is around as well. For this ceremony all the ogres have foregone armour, as well as the ogre in the middle. His hands begin to work, the eagles fly closer and he is seen tying long pieces of red cloth to his body. A long strip goes around his head, two around his ankles, two around his wrists and finally a long red sash around his bulging middle. He nods and the rest of the ogres being tying and binding the barrels to their body via carrying harness. Skeletons are on full alert at this and begin to run towards the edge of the burnt out district that overlooks that particular camp. Rowdy stringing his bow on the run and Agile double checking his matchlock rifle on the fly. Eye sockets prowl the buildings for advantage spots and Agile spies a building with a burnt tower veering off to make his way up. Rowdy holds up in the second floor of another nearby building and makes a small smouldering fire from his kit to light his arrows. Auspicious and Drunk squirrel away on the bottom floor of the tower building and begin setting up tripwire traps. Rowdy and Agile see the barrel laden ogre about 200 yards away, a long shot for any person, and the other ogres begin to salute the barrel ogre almost in a final goodbye kind of way. There are other soldiers among the ranks and they stand at attention in full armour. The barrel ogre begins to lumber down the path the soldiers created and it is now clear what the door knocker's intention is as it's heading towards the gate. Rowdy knocks an arrow and pulls back as Agile sets his matchlock on the edge of the tower opening, the wind battering against it as pigeons scattering from the beams above him. Rowdy lets fly an arrow and is strong enough that it's direct hit on one of the barrels. However, it fails to do any damage. It instead sticks there. Alarm spreads immediately and all the soldiers, as well as the ogres, begin to form a wall around the ogre. The wall soldiers begin to fire their own arrows as well, mistaking it for a command, and begin to rain missile fire upon the soldiers and ogres below. The Arderman's units, however, still believing the first fire arrow came from the wall, and the flank shots from the skeletons are still not being blocked. This assumption is dashed, however, when Agile makes his first shot. A large plume of smoke cascades away from the tower, a telling shot, but the round slams home and into the hip of the ogre, who stumbles and falls to a knee, the flaming arrow still blazing merrily. One of his ogre comrades runs over and helps the barreled ogre to his feet, supporting his weight on his shoulders as they both begin to do their best to move forward towards the gate. Another flame arrow from Rowdy arches through the air and lands another solid hit on the same barrel, but still not enough damage to set the barrel off or break the wood away to expose the powder underneath. Both of the ogres are now aware that they are getting shot from behind and the two look at each other before nodding. If not the gate, then the wall will do. The two ogres spin on the spot and begin running as fast as they can towards the nearest wall section, roaring out a war challenge as arrow and gunfire rain down from them from the wall. Agile has finished reloading and lays his rifle once again on the edge of the tower opening, and eye sockets his rifle sights carefully. His skeletal fingers grip the sockets, and the firing mechanism is actuated. Dice are rolled. They are fast despite their size, and the wall seems easily within reach. Throats rumble as they call out their victory and challenge, both of them covered in arrow bolts and bleeding from many wounds. The roars are cut short when a whizzing shot shatters the barrel with two flaming arrows stuck to it, and the two beings are lost in a flash of fire and smoke. The shock wave is immense, throwing men from the walls to their deaths and shredding Arderman soldiers on the ground with shrapnel from the blast, if not getting caught up in the ripple of the blast. Agile Skeldon looks over the top of his rifle as the smoke clears and sees nothing but a smoking crater where the two ogres used to be and nods in approval, pulling out his ramrod to reload. As Rowdy, Drunk and Auspicious begin to run back towards the smaller gate, Agile is distracted by a fluttering piece of red cloth that floats down from the winds and lands on his tower ledge. He reaches over and grabs it, looking down at the blackened and stained material. As he's doing this, 
the ogres who weren't in the blast have already been moving towards the tower and kick in the door of it. Hearing the loud thud, Agile quickly gathers up his rifle and begins to exit the tower, running down the roof of the charred building. The ogres find a few of the tripwire traps with their feet, and when they finally blunder into the tower opening, they are bloody and furious. Furious enough to take their hammers and tear the rest of that fucking tower off the building, and wooden remains scatter down the rift towards Agile. Agile Skeleton fumbles for his only grappling hook from a way back during the ship fight, and whips it around on its rope before tossing it. It misses anything, and he quickly hauls it back in while looking over his shoulder. The ogres are unsteadily walking down the rift towards him, their heavy feet breaking through here and there, and having to wrench their feet back out of the rift. With another wind up, Agile manages to hook the other rift nearby and starts to try and shimmy across the rope. Soldiers on the walls see this, and the closest body of archers begin to do their best to give Agile cover. It's a bit windy outside today. Oh no. Arrows swerve from the ogre and begin to fly amongst Agile. He has to dodge and weave while also holding his rifle and moving across the rope. Loud Australian flavoured curses mingle with the wind. A great ogre hand grabs the rope, but it's a pretty good knot, and he's having trouble pulling it apart. This, however, bounces Agile up and down in his rope, rotating like a frog stuck on a jump rope. Fuck! Fuck's sake. (laughs) Agile screams, clinging on and barely moving now. Rowdy sees this, and runs back over, drawing out his pistol. Ogre strength wins against ogre patience, and the great Brit just rips that part of the riff away, with the knot still attached to it. It roars in victory just in time for a round ball to slam into its unarmoured chest. Rowdy rolls massive damage, and the ogre is killed instantly as the bullet turns its heart to mush. With a gurgle of surprise, the ogre falls off the roof, still clutching the rope in its death grip. Agile feels the rope go slack, then starts sliding down the rope towards the dead ogre. For fuck's sake! (laughs) The skeleton lands bodily on top of the dead ogre, takes a few points of blunt damage, then begins to make his own run to freedom. With the gate man waiting, all the skeletons clamber on board of a rope ladder and climb up on top of the wall, Agile rattling shakily from the whole ordeal as he does. The soldiers on top asks if the skeletons need anything, and one soldier offers they could get them some milk if they'd like. Skeleton hurls some abuse at him for racial profiling, (laughs) but do take them up on getting more ammunition. After a few turns of recouping, and an hour and a half of in-game time, the skeletons decide to make a report to Kyla. While Rowdy makes the report, Auspicious sends out his eagles for another scout run, one to find Chiron, and the other to watch the ogres. Auspicious does a rough drawing of Chiron, of a human girl with no ears, so a cat girl. Yeah. It's a bloody cat girl. And the eagle looks at Auspicious as if he's soft in the head. A human girl with no ears? A beastkin, maybe? Perhaps this skeleton has never seen a beastkin before. It thinks, but takes off anyway. Off to search for this strange girl. Ooh. ooh. (laughs) (laughs) The other eagle is hovering above the district and circles a few times before pinging Auspicious. Using shared vision, Auspicious sees a lot of ogres looking through the district for any signs of the skeletons and moving in the direction of their hidden camp. The camp is way off way, but the threat is still there. Rowdy tells Kyla this, unknowingly setting her into full flight mode. Unbeknownst to Rowdy, ogres and onis are mortal enemies, and ogres have been the nightmare fuel of onis for generation. As ogres are all male race, while onis are a normal male and female race. Connect the dots. The skeletons feel the dread of their necromancer wash over them, and then feel her presence getting closer. All four of the skeletons make it to the walls in time to see that goddamn carriage careening over a rough terrain. My horses! cries Auspicious, not knowing if they're even hooked up right. Even worse, the ogres have seen the carriage. The carriage is heading towards the little side gate and a handful of ogres begin to run in order to intercept it. Auspicious, enraged, terrorises the soldiers into opening the gate. Drunk skeleton and Auspicious skeleton running down to help them dislodge the barriers and torsen locks. Rowdy and Agile run down to the wall towards the ogres and begin taking pot shots at them with their black powder weapons, plinking off damage and doing their best to drag their attention. Oi! 
ogre cunts! Agile Skeleton holds up the red cloth and begins shouting jeers at them. Got a bit of your stupid mate here? Ogres are incensed. Ogres veer away for a moment and start pumping rocks and rubble at the skeletons. Give us the cloth, you bastard! They roar, and as they throw, they notice something. However, since they are nearer to the wall, they see the gate starting to open. Ogre wisdom wins out over ogre rage. The ogres laugh ruefully at the skeletons, and then start running towards the gate. The carriage now on the road and nearing ever closer. First is clinging to the top of the carriage with half a bread loaf in her mouth, the wind rustling her fur. Kyla is wide-eyed next to Omen as they wrestle with the reins, the horses barely hooked up properly in place. Their hair mingles with the wind and they're both screaming while First is wide-eyed and loving it. Inside the carriage, Harla has her head poked out of the window and is looking around, not really in a panic, but more like a curious sightseer. Auspicious calls down his eagles to harass the ogres as he walks out of the open gate and hefts his hammer torch. There are three ogres and both are running at full speed. Skeletons are also running down the wall, tracking the ogres. The carriage coming to a screeching stop before the gates, the ogres only 30 yards away. Kyla runs around the carriage and grabs her mother, both of them running towards the gate, with Omen close behind. First looks around to see what the big deal is and spots the ogres. She spits the bread out of her mouth. Fuck that! First leaps from the top of the carriage and stumbles down the seat, even clambering over the horses in her hurry to get away from the oncoming door knockers. In the distance, more ogres are heard coming. The three ogres are just below Agile and Rowdy. Rowdy and Agile look at each other on the run, and Agile shrugs. With wild abandonment, Agile drops his rifle and pulls out his short sword, leaping from the top of the walls and down in a series of corkscrews. Despite it never should have happening, Agile slams down, blade point first into the neck of an ogre, doing weapon and blunt damage at the same time for mass. It's enough to gank an ogre in one hit, covering the skeleton in arterial spray. Ogre does not die quietly, and his buddy turns in time to see Agile Skeleton flying towards him in another attack leap, and catches him by the skull in his massive hand. Oh god. Ah, right, Agile mutters, now dangling by the skull. Rowdy has seen this and drops the bow, pulling out a pair of hunting knives from his belt, and doing another leap from the wall down into the now still ogre, him is holding Agile by the skull. He rolls in 19 without modifiers, and the party and those listening go nuts. Rowdy Skeleton comes down, sinking both daggers into the eyes of the ogre, the blades cracking through the hardy skull and plunging deep into the brain. The ogre stiffens and slowly falls backwards, landing heavily on its back. Agile, however, is still stuck in the ogre's fist and Rowdy is struggling to pull his knives from their fleshy prison, which means the last ogre is running towards the gate, and the only skeleton in the way is Auspicious. The gate is closing slowly behind Auspicious, whom is walking towards the ogre with his hammer torch held in both hands, tapping it in his palm. His player has made it quite clear it's supposed to be as Jojo as possible. Okay. <laughs> the ogre laughs as he continues to run at Auspicious. Oh, you're approaching me instead of running away? You're coming right to me, it roars, pulling out its hammer on the run. Auspicious Skeleton tilts down his flower crown lower over his eyes, making his eye sockets look angry. But I can't beat the shit out of you without getting closer. With only a few feet away, Auspicious runs at the ogre and the two weapons meet in a flash of sparks and purple energy. 